Hello one and all and welcome to episode 16 of the Contest Realm podcast. As you all know, you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes. All links obviously in bios for that. And let's just say episode 16 is probably one of the craziest weeks that has been in a very long time for this game. And this is going to be a very special edition of this podcast, which goes into, actually has taken a lot of things into consideration because it was originally meant to focus largely on Act 7 beta, uh, nodes, uh, counters, so many inner workings of that and feedback. But obviously we've derailed to focus on a lot of the things at large from uh, from spending, uh, impacting on free-to-play, alliance-based participation, new and future content, obviously, uh, including Act 7, Act 6 and many others, uh, general enjoyment of the game and much more, obviously, will form the basis of the burning topics we're going to address. Now, without further ado, um, first of all, I need to introduce my glamorous co-host who's been doing his best to keep up with Act 7 Beta, the problems of the situation and many other things and the excellent work he does on frontlinemcc.home.blog. That's www.frontlinemcc.home.blog. Links are in the description as always. And where has he been putting a lot of work this week? He's been doing five reasons to rank up five stars over six stars. Incursion signature uh, synergy teams, uh, which obviously uh, you should go and check out. So make sure to bookmark www.frontlinemcc.home.blog. Dan, how you doing? Rich, I am doing well. A lot has happened since the last time we spoke, my friend. Yeah, we had a kind of like a, I'd say... It, it was one of like our newsy type editions, which is nice because it's us like chatting about stuff in game. Who knew that between Sunday when we recorded last and this Sunday, there's so many things, so many things. Yeah, I mean, let's 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 get into it with the headline, Rich. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, on the Ruffle Jimmy scale, where are we right now? We are at a ten, but we are so spicy and hot. We're going into <laughs> something that is gonna. Once you eat it, it's going to be spicy. When it comes out the other end, it is going to burn. <laughs> Absolutely burn. Oh, my. Yeah. Right. And we've we've got so much stuff to go over. I think I would just get right into introducing our guest, shall I? Absolutely, because we have... I, I'm very excited about today's guest, and he is perfect for what we're going to be talking about. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to try and do this intro as best I can uh, in the frame of uh, his name. So... <clears throat> He once smashed up his phone because Human Torch was insulting him. Invisible Woman is going out with John Cena, so you, can, you can't see either of them, which made him go unstoppable. And Reed Richards keeps doing some stanky dance, which makes him stack, ra- uh, stack rocks. Yeah, you know what time it is. And a massive welcome to Clobberin' Time! Thanks very much for joining us on the podcast. Hello, hi, my name is Clobberin' Time. You can call me CT. I'm, uh, yes, I'm happy to be on the show, and I can't wait to talk about the topics that we have lined up today. Yeah, because, like, it's it's not been the conventional week that I think a lot of us planned, has it? No, not at all. We've seen massive unrest, and I think it's, uh, this will definitely be an interesting episode, like, uh, all things considered, because so much has happened in the past week, it's crazy. Mm. Because uh, I think when we we first of all kind of like Dan's been speak speaking to you a while about uh, coming on here, and we've been we were thinking this week that oh yeah, it'd be great to have Clobber in time in to talk about a lot of the stuff with Act Seven, thoughts around the beta, lots of things from tips and tricks, uh, Kabam, you know, and like how they're kind of like taking further content, but it's it's completely derailed. And but obviously before we get into this, I want to do a little bit of uh, finding a little bit more about uh, you. And uh, and also some like little bits that maybe people don't know. So first of all, what is your device of choice or what device do you play on? My daily driver for MCOC is iPhone XR. I also play on the iPhone XS Max and a few iPads that I have lying around. Oh, which one do you think runs the game the most smoothest? My iPhone XR. Wow. <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. Because that's that's kind of like the, the, the lower scale than some of the other devices you mentioned. Yeah, is it, is it like I, the not not the 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 budget version because that's I can't remember what that's called. I think we might have another name in the no we we do have the same name in the UK. Is, so is the XR the kind of the the lower scale one in, in like the budget version of? Yeah, I only run MCOC on it as I I didn't pick it up necessarily for it, but I was gifted it by a friend and I just have it sitting around. So I only run MCOC on the device. So I think that may contribute to it running faster. Ah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. yeah I, th- I think I've got the um, the what, what have I got? I've got the 11 Pro, 11 Pro, and I've only just got MCOC on it. I do feel that because of the screen size, it's not like you know. I'm getting older. I'm not. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. You know, I'm, <laughs> oh, I, rich. I, I've got. I've got to wear glasses most of the time. So I need something with a bigger screen in future. So that's that's. I mean, that's me. That's me. But um, anyway, next <laughs> next question. Okay, what's your favorite quest in MCOC that say has been for over the last uh, five years? I really love the content creator boss rushes. I think the. Uh, well, giving champions and creators the ability to forge their own fights was was huge, and it's really good interaction with the community. Mm. Not to mention, they're not too difficult, so it it can be played by a lot of people. And I also really enjoyed the Grandmaster fight. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Um, how how about other games? Not just MCOC. Is there anything that you're currently playing at the moment that you you quite enjoy, or uh, maybe a pastime from uh, MCOC? I uh, I play a lot of first person shooters, so I'm oh. digging Valorant right now. Really? Got in, yeah. What is your thoughts on some of the say the the bigger names like Doctor Disrespect? Obviously, uh, saying his piece and refusing to play it um, ongoing. Um, do, do you kind of enjoy it? Say more from? Uh, do, do you not see say some of his points about the game and just feel like you enjoy it where other people may not? I think that it's a really good question, and I play it very casually, while someone right. like Dr. Disrespect or other professional streamers play it in their name professionally, mm-hmm. and I think that's a huge difference in your ability to enjoy the game. So yeah. I uh, I enjoy it more at a casual level. If I were more competitive in it, it would definitely uh, definitely be a different perspective, but yeah, I, I mean- do agree with some of the points raised by Dr. Disrespect. It's it, obviously like that will be something of a comparison against some of the uh, the points we're going to talk about today from say last week. Obviously, Seaton's a massive name in MCOC. The same thing you could say with like a Tifu in Fortnite or Doctor Disrespect for the Call of Duty PUBG. So that's going to be um, quite a good comparison to come back to uh, at a later point for say notoriety uh, and as well like making positive change within uh, some some titles. Okay, um, what made you play MCOC? So I started MCOC in the beta. I yeah. started playing it when it was only available in Denmark or the Netherlands, some uh, Eastern European country. But I started playing it because I'm deeply involved in the world of comics. If you follow me on Twitter, you might see me post first appearances of some of the champions that we have stepping into the contest. Mm. Those are all from my personal collection. None of those photos are sourced from external uh Sources and I, I uh, worked in a comic book shop for a very long time. Mm. It was kind of my pastime. So, seeing an MCOC mobile game that I could play in my free time was a huge. Oh, look at this! I can enjoy this. So that was definitely a, a natural stepping stone for me. Okay, next New York Comic Con that's on. We got to go comic book shopping together, dude. I love that. Uh, yeah, I've we- been having my eyes on a GSX one for a very long time now. Ooh. I have to scoop one up with you. We um we actually did a little bit of that at New York Comic Con. We went around, uh, picked up some <laughs> some some nice nice pieces, and as well, obviously you can't go wrong with uh, with one one dollar uh, comic book. So I've been uh, going and collecting my uh, volume two of Wolverine. I've got the nice little limited set from set from the nineteen eighties, and uh, I've always wanted to start collecting the uh, the 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 next uh, volume that came from there, which uh, I've got, I've got a lot to collect, but it's always nice to pick up something and as well, something at, that's uh, at value. But the thing is, we, we've now got to, we've now got to tackle the, the meat of, uh, of our discussion. And as I said, at the start, start of this was, we were going to be focusing mainly on the act seven beta. We will be focusing on it, but obviously we've got to kick off a lot of discussion, obviously with, um, with cob- clobbering time in a, uh, high alliance are you still with uh, omni i thought i saw you weren't you were allianceless last time i, I am uh i am still an omni okay. i am part of the omniverse uh you might have seen some of my beta screenshots yes that's, which, that's probably uh, you don't confused. have an alliance so um i do i played with omni for a very long time i was one of their founding members back when they started oh so many years ago and i was one of the original officers so i do have that perspective of coming from high tier alliance quest and alliance war and kind of stepping down to a more reduced role yeah a bit of um kind of like uh i don't say it's uh, not 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 fan fiction or type trivia or anything but when you guys started up omni if i remember rightly there was a lot of disrespect to you guys and um i think it was a case that i did like a marvel contest champions news type thing and i just said look let them do their thing and they will be like one of the best and like you know you're one of the best 
Uh, I, I don't know if any probably nobody remembers that, but um, I think it was it was Yeet with your, you you guys set up Omni. Is that correct? Yes, Yeet was yeah. kind of the uh, linchpin of the entire Omni group. He assembled. He was our Nick Fury. He assembled all the different members in order to forge us into a uh, a a group. He messaged me out of the blue in February, and he was like, "Hey, you want to join uh, this initiative?" <laughs> yeah, and uh, we built up out of that into this alliance. And yes, we did receive a lot of backlash because. So many of our members were content creators. It was essentially, they were like, oh, you're just leeching off of your subs to get high prestige people. But no, we had the ability to be competitive off the bat. Yeah. And we've uh, really solidified ourselves within the high-end game community in regards to alliances and alliance quest. Yeah, fantastic. Sorry, Dan, I will bring you in in a second. No, no, it's all it's all good. <laughs> we have guests, so we can, we can talk to them. It, it is interesting to, to kind of like get all these um, uh, bits of info together and obviously bring people yeah. to understand a little bit more. Um, okay, Dan, if you want to lead us into just talking about um, last week, you know, not, well, it's, it's still this week, isn't it? Like the th Thursday. Yeah, stuff. it's it's still this week. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazingly enough, uh, everything we're going to talk about has happened in the last seven days. It's crazy. Um, mm. It's crazy. So on Monday, uh, we got our first taste of what Act 7, or I guess, I guess they're going to call it Book 2, Act 1 is going to look like, and we just got the first chapter on Monday, so everyone was, was diving into the beta, and that's when, um, I think that's when everything that happened this week really kicked off as people got in to the, the, uh, the beta and just had a lot of comments, a lot of concerns, a lot of questions about the overall de uh, design philosophy that was being put into the permanent content uh, of the game. And then, of course, later on in the week, that's when we um, that's when the dam burst and Seton put out his video that he was going to be stepping out of Omni, that he was uh he was burned out on high tier alliance war alliance quest and not having as much fun in the game and really that the that his look at the beta had really been kind of the nail in the coffin um for him wanting to or needing to stay competitive right now he outlined a whole bunch of reasons that we might get into later mm -hmm. um and that was really the dam bursting for um the community in a lot of ways is Seton wasn't talking about anything that other people haven't talked about that he hasn't been talking about. Uh, but it was sort of a, a, a death by a thousand paper cuts. And when you have the biggest creator in the game saying something like that, suddenly you get this wealth of feedback and there's been a ton of unrest in the community since then. And uh, you know, responses from Kabam Mike responses from the developers of the beta about where things may go. So I think the first thing to do is just go around the, the room, starting with you, Clobber, and time is like, how are you feeling about the state of the game right now? I The state of the game right now is really interesting because a lot of the content being put out, a lot of the high tier content can only be done by specific champions. And mm -hmm. I feel as if the game can be improved so we can use more of our rosters. And I feel like the game is showcasing an incredibly small amount of champions at a high skill level in order to finish content at that high level. Like, Take a look at Abyss. There's a the horseman. So I feel like the game needs to expand to the point where we can use more champions in more viable situations. And they shouldn't punish us as severely for not using those champions. So I feel like the state of the game is slowly mellowing down to kind of the liquid state that we can kind of use to forge a good relationship with Kabam going forward in regards to improving the game from a summoner standpoint. Mm. But gotcha. you... And Rich, you just put out a, a video, um, I think yesterday, right, mm -hmm. about some of your thoughts about the game. But how are, how are you just emotionally, how are you feeling about the game right now? It's a bit of a weird, weird one for me because I've now just come back to an alliance from a one month break and obviously had more opportunity to get a lot of content done and still, you know, uh, live my life, edit videos, get on with stuff. So I've, I've come back relatively refreshed from what was, I thought, a stage of burnout. And, uh, you know, I've, I've burnt out from the game once a year. So September 2019, just before I came to New York Comic Con, I was like right about ready to just say I cannot be bothered to cover this game anymore. 
but I had to kind of take a moment to just say, look, is is anything changing? Has anything really been said overly? That do people agree with me? Do they not? But um, yeah, I mean, at this stage, there's there's a good point, obviously, that that Clobber in time made about about obviously new content as well, talking about champions. And this is the problem, I think, Kabam, we're creating things like variants. It showcases what good end game content could be, but it's not part of the story side of things. And that's that's really where, where I'm at is that I think there's lots of things personally I'd like to see. And obviously we keep saying each month or we'd like a variant, but yep. I'm happy to a degree, but maybe I'm just not looking at stuff in great detail. Like I've just come back from being away from alliances. So the thing I didn't like I am now, I took myself away from, I detracted myself away from the negativity to come back feeling a bit more positive. If you, if do you get what I mean with that? Oh yeah, no, for, for sure. I mean, I think it, it depends um, how much you've been pushing yourself. I think when you talk particularly about, um, you know, Seton's case, right? Like you're talking about playing map seven every day with the master modifiers and pushing for top aq um rankings like and and you know when you contrast that with you taking a month off well yeah. your burnout's going to be in a very different place right yeah but it doesn't mean so, to say that it's not it's not that i completely agree with yeah. um a lot of that stuff i mean to you know clobber in time you do uh content in a way that i couldn't really match on on number one a skill level number two from an effort level and you know number three from uh, a motivational standpoint so th this is the case of like and that's a question actually i want to throw quickly to clobber time is that do you feel like you burn out from the high-end content that you've done for the extent of time that you've played the game uh you kind of cut out there at the beginning of the question could you repeat oh it? sorry um so do you feel that in comparison to C and obviously doing the level of content as he's done as well as for the extent of time that you've done, have you ever felt any stage you have burnt out? I'd say that my burn is a slow burn. I did take a few breaks from definitely high tier Alliance War content and Alliance Quest content simply because like if you messed up in one Alliance War at the high level, then your day got ruined and mm. there's no reason why that should happen. If you die once, then bam, you've let down 30 people of like your pastime. Like, that's not fun. I don't want to do that. So I stepped back and I said to the Alliance, hey, I'm not interested in doing high tier war. And then everybody else was kind of like, yeah, we agree with you. So the burnout kind of happened as an Alliance. Mm. And I mean, I'm sure if anyone keeping up with Omni, and I, I'm not sure that there are many people who do that, but you've seen us. Well, we've taken a step back from high tier war. It's yeah. just too much. It's when a single fight can make or break a day that's no longer fun that's like it's just not there it's just not there for the alliance and i don't see it being that important especially when you compare risk to reward if you're going to risk every single war having that huge burden of oh if i screw up in this fight i disappoint 30 people i get passive aggressively tagged in my alliance comment section yep. um mm. I get put on backup or an easier path because I screwed up on this one fight. Like, that's no fun. And especially when you consider the payout. Like, oh, right now the high ticket item in Alliance War is those crystals, like those uh, tier five class catalyst crystals. Mm. But say if we go back like a, a few weeks ago to Deadpool Spring Cleaning, I could drop an Odin and get a 10% crystal right off of that. And that's and I do mean this completely entirely, the risk and reward associated with buying an Odin and then buying a crystal that contains the same amount of rewards as, say, a month of high-stress, high-endurance, high-cost alliance war? Oh, there's no comparison. And I think that's, uh, that's something that really needs to just be kind of thought about. And I do have feelings of burnout, and I have burned out before in the past, but I'd say the entire alliance and a lot of high-end alliances are just like, nah, we don't want to compete at this level. And I think that it's a, a resounding sentiment. And I mm. think a lot of people are just agreeing with that statement right now, especially with all the big content creators coming forward. I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, High-end content is not worth it at the moment. Okay. When, this is the thing of bringing it down a little bit and looking at... Because, uh, Dan, you're an officer. Clobbering time, are you, are you an yes. officer in your alliance? I'm not an officer. Okay. I'm, um, I'm a member. I step down. From, from like... 
um, obviously, Dan, from a, a point of view, obviously, where you are, I know you've made changes with with your alliance as an officer because obviously, same similar. Th- obviously, not the extent on difficulty uh, as Cobra yep. in time, but you've you've had to make the decision as an alliance to step down your uh, your kind of uh, how many battle groups you run, maybe just like where your focus is. Do you see it the stress from like an officer's point of view um, on on your on your play on your players on your members? Yeah, there's definitely the stress on the members. It's in a it's in a bunch of different ways. It's certainly uh, to to echo what Clobber and Time said. No one likes to feel like they've let the alliance down. Um, that's really that's really hard. Um, with the defensive tactics getting more and more amped up, uh, people are getting frustrated because they they haven't figured out quite how to tackle some of these these bosses like mojo on flow and and things like that and i think the other thing is there's there's been that there there's two different sides of the community i think especially when it comes to alliance quest and i think rich you and i are on a separate wavelength with aq but that's totally fine like Hmm. you've talked about aq is like all right it's boring it's stale um it's just punching a time clock but then for a lot of other people and and I would put myself in this category. I really like the consistency and predictability of AQ is like, I know I can go in and run my lane. And if I play well, use zero items over five days and I Mm -hmm. get these great rewards and I just got to, okay, am I punching the time clock? Yes, but it's the juice versus squeeze calculus is there for me. But then when you throw in new mini bosses, a second variation of map six for the first time. Mm. We're trying to play one day of map seven now to break into the top 90 some weeks, but that's three different variations of map seven that as an officer, you have to assign paths for and Mm. champs and then, and teach people how to play. Cause make no mistake when you're transitioning from six to seven, you have to teach a battle group (laughs) how to play map seven. Um, So I think, the development team looked at it as like, well, we're adding more variety to Alliance Quest, but as an officer, you just added more work. Yeah, and that's the thing about taking uh, everything that's uh, stress and, um, you know, it, it just you don't want stress. You want to keep it as fun as possible uh, as a game right. mode. Obviously, from, um, you know, we, we know that diff- different thought processes, I'm, I'm very much on a, a case of going the same thing with Alliance Wars, is just remove both modes and create something new. Uh, but that again is is a case that I don't like the fact that that Kabam have taken something of regularity and decided to add uh, more onto it without even considering certain things from the core elements of a day to day grinding into consideration in the way obviously the game has has changed. Um, I think it's a I think uh, I'm just gonna quickly before going into like you know reworking game modes and things, it's just go back to to clobbering time and find out. From from yourself, uh, clobber in time. Do you do you get this element of obviously we talked about like you know the stress and obviously letting down people, but do you feel that the when you start the week of doing an AQ by the end of it, obviously Dan saying it's a great payout for stuff like glory and a positioning. By the end of the week, are you do you have glory left? Do you have anything that you could then use to then buy more things like tier five basics or stuff that you need from there? Or is it a case you're you're blasting through your glory based on obviously your grind? I so I I don't think Alliance Quest is worth it right now. Mm. Uh, whole transparency, I uh, from a high end standpoint, I our Alliance Omni does map seven every single day with the highest possible modifiers and will place in the top twenty. Because mm. at, once you get up this high, it's all about prestige. And hey, if you can't uh, pay the toll, then you won't get the rewards. So right now, uh, I'm looking at my inventory just for statistics. I have two hundred and eighteen map seven Alliance Quest crystals. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, so many weeks. And keep in mind, map seven is expensive. Mm. Map seven oh, yeah. is a whole lot of resources, a whole lot of time investment in the arena, in uh, grinding war, especially for the loyalty. Loyalty has been a big pain point for us, especially with a reduced standpoint on on wars. It's not feasible for us. Well, it's not feasible for me. Like I, I pay the battle chip cost every week, however many Ks it be determine Mm -hmm. or depending on if i've made any trades for loyalty or anything like that it's not worth it to me because i just have all these resources sitting there to answer your question about uh glory 
I currently have 11,000 glory just sitting there. Right, and okay. I have no intention of spending it. Because the champions that I need to rank up either A, aren't in my roster, or B, require things that aren't available to me right now. So mm. uh, it's either catalysts that I need. I haven't pulled them from any crystals, like tier 5 class catalyst crystals. Or it's I just don't have the champions. I don't have any high prestige five or six stars to rank up, and I don't want to invest in five stars if the next week, hey, I just pulled a six star. All right, all that effort was wasted. And it, it sucks because every single week I put in effort. You log in four to five times every day, and it's like a like a clock every single time period. Like I, I have timers set for like midnight because I have to clear my section two pass in map seven. And it's for me to be putting in that effort and the grind and then to not even use the resources is just a big old shrug because mm. what's my point in investing all this effort and time if there is going to be no noticeable reward? What is What am I getting from doing this? Nothing. I'm mm. not using the resources and I'm not putting in anything. You wow. Know, it, yeah, I that's, mean, that's it, it shows you like how what the what the enormous spread in the game is from someone like myself who's in you know i would say i'm in a for aq you know we're regularly hitting top 150 and we're pushing top 90 like when when i talk about those rewards for me like those rewards for me are very very meaningful because five stars are still very very important to me mm -hmm. but when you talk about someone who's further up the chain like uh, like clobber time is in in omni and someone who's done uh, you know, like act six and things like that. And it's really has a six star roster that's worth investing is in like the, the, their progress has outpaced the available rewards. If you remember back to when um, uncollected difficulty came out and the conclusion of act five, right? We actually got uncollected difficulty and, and act five completion the same month, right? So mm. the first time you were able to get those tier five basics, you could also continue to grind those in the uncollected where like these guys like Seton are talking about, like, because there's no Cavalier difficulty with Cavalier rewards, they, they already got all the rewards that mean anything to them. <laughs> yeah. And now they can't do it again. Yeah. I'm going to share a fact that I haven't put out publicly yet, but I didn't complete uncollected last month. I, I didn't do it. Wow. It's just not worth my time and effort to devote five hours to clearing uncollected for like pitiful well i did get the initial clear done i i just don't have the time or effort to put into getting the uh relevant shards because if i can get it from another source and like i don't like first off i didn't have the time for it but still i didn't make the time for it it's one of those things where it's not worth it to me to clear this difficulty because the rewards don't relate to my progression it's just not right. there mm. and that's and a I, huge problem yeah i agree with you completely and i mean the two resources that I'm bottle capped at right now, and the reason and the reasons why I can't rank up champions is gold and ISO eight, and that <laughs> is a pain point for a lot of people, especially in the high end. And I mean, you guys laugh because oh yeah, yeah. you guys are um, you guys are probably waiting on the catalyst. But once you get those yeah. catalysts, and I have them in a in abundance, and I just uh, I currently for context, I have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I have 32 rank five five stars, and mm -hmm. I uh, and I have a good chunk of rank two six stars as well. And I don't have the gold to rank someone arbitrarily up to rank five just for giggles. Mm. Uh, so I need to be very careful about my resource investment in regards to those champions. And with I I've had to be very careful about ISO eight management. That's something that you don't really consider because uh, I mean I'm sure you guys are using whatever you got on whatever champions, but when six stars start requiring so much and just there's a crazy amount of ISO eight difference in the amount of ISO eight it takes to level a five star and six star. It's pretty crazy, honestly, mm. in regards to individual levels. Uh, and I, I feel like as that steps up, if gold and ISO eight don't become more available, it's going to be annoying. And I mean, I know I've heard the, Oh, grind arenas. I do grind arenas. I have, uh, over 110,000 PvP fights won. And that's... I, and I do it every week. I hit the milestones. Every single week, I hit the milestones. And I, I'm i just not there. It's just not there. A two-star dupe gives me pitiful ISO 8 that I can't even invest to a six-star, really. Mm. It's just 
Meh. This seems and... to be where Kabam are largely out of touch, but it it kind of and this is one of one of the things that came out of this week or obviously the last couple of days is everybody has got a specific problem that's obviously tailored to where they're at in game at the moment or you know they have no availability but the 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 biggest issue is that kabam seem out of touch with the understanding of each individual problems but they're all legitimate problems well Uh, i mean you guys laughed there's an obvious answer to my problem and that's to spend money (laughs) but not like 150 or so calves and just dropped it right there i would pull I, well, I had a chance at pulling a relevant six star. I could get a ton of ISO eight. Horse air rate's not too bad. I mean, but, you know, we like we. I think me and Dan laughed because we were we we don't un, we we didn't obviously understand the extent of like that that kind of problem. Obviously, the same thing that if I said that I had a problem that I think you know other people may laugh at laugh at my, laugh at my problem. But it's like it's it's like how the other half live. Um, in that we we're like, wow, is that is that a thing? We didn't know that. But well, it's, it's funny because you think you think someone at that level he's going to be talking about T five CC, and instead he's talking about the two most basic resources yeah. in the game holding yeah. him back. Oh well, yeah, I do need tier five class catalysts, but it's one of those things where there's a limited amount of them. They're being drip fed to us, but at a base level, I just need golden ISO. Yeah. If I want to rank up, like say Howard the Duck, and have a fun afternoon with him. I don't have that potential. I don't have the ability to use the full extent of my roster because I'm holding out for those specific resources for that specific event. It's one of those things where it's just, eh, I have to invest and I have spreadsheets for my account because I just have to make sure everything gets managed properly. And I'm like pulling a Brian Grant. I have like eight spreadsheets in regards to my rosters and polls and whether I should do trade and offers in the uh, Black ISO market store. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? Like, with a lot of different things that Kabam have brought in from the objectives, those objective crystals incur- and incursions, are there many areas that Kabam should be considering adding more things to? I mean, like you've hinted there, like, you know, ISO should be added in greater abundance to things like, I don't know, Heroic Master and uh, Uncollected Difficulty. And the same thing would be for solo events, um, those objective crystals and then maybe a lot more into incursions where you know maybe kaban was saying first of all we're, we're fine with the amount of gold that people are able to get in an extra abundance where they weren't before do you feel that there could be areas that kaban could an- add into clobbering time so i agree with you in regards to the amounts but i feel like the with the tier difficulty i think that kaban have done a good job and increasing availability of potential for these resources. Mm -hmm. I just think that they failed in the ability for those uh, potential resources, the amounts. If we look at, say, the gold realms from a few weeks ago, it's honestly, that gold did nothing for me. Uh, When it takes 700,000 gold to rank to a six star just in the level up costs, what was it? Like, uh, it's... 250,000 was the cap on the gold that we could get from Gold Realm, which was like four energy refills. Oh, God. Yeah, it's uh, it is not looking good, comparatively speaking. And I mean, of course, I do the uh, Black Iso Market quests, but if I want to rank up someone for fun, that's... So I, I took a champion up to rank five recently. I started with 7.2 million gold, and I'm down to 4.5 billion, 5 million. Wow. It's, it's such an aggressive resource sink for me to invest in a champion that small drip fed measures like incursions incursions offer uh what is it 120,000 gold uh every five days like uh, yeah that's that's really nice and considering the time involvement of oh okay it's 45 minutes so uh i'll make that work it, it's one of those things where is it really worth it in the long run is it worth it to me to run incursions six or seven times in order to get the gold i need to rank to a six star like it, that's just one right mm. like Catalysts aren't even a pain point for me. I have three rank up gems from one to two from Act Six. It's it just feels like the resource availability for champions and summoners at a high level is slowly widening in their breadth. Like I'm, I could get this from any anywhere. Pretty much all modes give gold. It's one of the core essential bits of this game. Like yeah. you get it from moving in tiles and questing. You get it from doing incursions, as you mentioned. You get it from doing arena. And I do all those things, and they pay out gold. Yes, that's true. They do. But it's just not enough. 
there's just not enough of this specific resource within the game to cater to having fun in it. When you're competing at these high levels and you're like, okay, I got to make sure that my next uh, rank two six star increases my prestige to a point where we can beat out this other alliance. That becomes a battle of the spreadsheets, really. Then you're mm -hmm. just trying to lock out on the opponent and get out, get a nice six star. Because that's all it is in the top levels of AQ. Uh, last week, we placed in the top 20 for Omni. And every single person above us did the exact same thing we did. They 100%ed map 7 every single day. They played it with the hardest possible modifiers. The only difference between us and the only reason and the only distinction between why they got so much more tier 5 class catalyst than us is because they had higher prestige. And that divide is only going to increase as the rich get richer. It becomes impossible to compete with someone, I don't know, maybe a month into this cycle, because when the difference in rewards from a top 10 to a top 20 finish is doubling the amount of tier 5 class catalyst you get, then mm -hmm. it just completely becomes irrelevant where you finish because you're locked into those positions off the bat. If they don't increase re avenues and revenues in order to... Um, get more of these resources aside from bracketed events, then there's no point. It's really no point for us to compete in the first place if we're already left in the dust before we even start the fight. Right. And obviously, uh, I just want to go a little bit further. Obviously, there's a there's a point here about prestige. And the, the biggest issue where that divides a free-to-play uh, player against a... A, uh, an extensive spender. I can't remember if it was Hector that tweeted um, out about champion acquisition and trying to remain competitive with prestige. Uh, does anybody know if he, if he had said something like that? Anyway, somebody Hector did. Hector has definitely outspoken about that in the past. Good. Right. Okay. Then we'll, we'll kind of reference Yeah. That Hector's big thing is the, the sig stone availability. So that yeah. sounds like something he would say. Yeah. Because I think <laughs> I saw a, 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 lot. a tweet by him making a point that Look, you know, say um, silver, like no, silver surface available is a six star, which, as we know, you know, extensive uh, prestige available. And it's a case like if the, you know, the say again, theoretically, the alliance that were above you had, um, everyone had a silver surfer, rank three six star. Um, they would obviously have the uh, the edge on you and obviously that's one of the reasons that you know many people were i think brian grant said this hector said this that how can i remain competitive as a player if i'm being shafted effect theoretically by spenders and uh, luck from crystals it's just ridiculous it's, because hector me and hector aren't that far apart on content he's completed act six i've completed act six the only difference that differentiates me from him is luck. It's mm. the ability to go in here and just pull the right champions. That's all it is. I got Silver Server, as you mentioned, off of uh, Grandmaster Crystals from its pre-release bundle. Gosh. And that uh, that pulled me uh, up in the prestige race a considerable amount. But when it So I have the highest possible prestige that you can get with five stars. I have mm. all the top five champions uh, for prestige as five stars ranked up rank five. Yeah, those uh, five stars are dead to me in the prestige race. It's impossible for me to continue using these champions. And I know this may seem like, oh, this is definitely a first world problem. I want to be very clear. <laughs> but um, our alliance prestige is over that limit. You can't touch a top 20 alliance quest without six stars. Yeah. And that and six stars main availability. And you I would be open to a debate on this is through Cavalier Crystals, which are directly related to spending money yep. for the most part and buying in bulk. So the top spots are reserved to people who have the six stars who in turn spent money. So the top spots are just money sinks. Mm. That's really all it is. And in order to maintain it, as I mentioned earlier, it's rich get richer mentality. They have the availability of more catalysts and they have the promise of those continued catalyst availability. The only part that gets me going is where are you going to use these? You know, mm. prestige is an important factor in a lot of things, but there's no end goal here there's no like oh hey yeah you know what if i finish rank one in alliance quest and i get those four um two percent tier five class catalysts for six weeks in a row then i'll beat mcoc there's no end goal <laughs> there's no yeah. way to say oh yes this is where i stop it's a kind of uh, when they release a new champion with the highest prestige in the game then like there's there's no point of continuing because then they have to the cycle starts anew that fifth champion in your prestige roster gets pushed back and all the investment, if it was a prestige champion, just gets sunk down into the rabbit hole. 
as I mentioned earlier, I have a large number of rank five five stars. Mm -hmm. About, I'd say maybe a quarter of those were done solely for the prestige. I would not have ranked a lot of these champions unless it was specifically for prestige. Examples include Phoenix, Gladiator Thor, Korg, well, Defense, but uh, yeah, that's it for the most part. I've actually, all these champions are pretty much viable. But yeah, Surfer uh, and Doom have both been amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I really like the releases. But point is, Prestige is impossible to touch, and it's a very bad mechanic for determining these rewards because once you've done that initial investment, like say a hundred bucks now would be very different from a hundred bucks a few months ago. Because a few months ago, then, hey, if you got the luckiest six star, then congratulations, you can advance in this prestige rabbit race. And as you mentioned earlier, six stones are a huge issue. Uh, I have a, a few rank, or, well, I have one rank three six star, which is Captain Marvel movie. And she's nice. uh, she's sitting at a healthy sig, like 83, I think. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get her up. But when you limit those amounts behind paywalls, then it just becomes garbage. Yeah. But I want to rank her up. This, I mean, this is a good point for us to take into i think talking about the end game content creation and around these five stars six stars and how they've been uh, unfortunately the key aspects to getting through certain things like gating systems because uh, i know that myself and dan are in similar positions when it comes to 100 percenting a lot of 6.2 my roster's only been there as of say January of this year to actually deal with any of the specific, really specific gating systems of 6.2. So therefore, obviously, um, for, for me and Dan, um, I don't know, Dan, is that the case that you we're both in the same position at looking at we can't get through certain gates because we need certain champions and maybe key champions to take out the boss or specific content? Yeah, I'm gonna I I'm gonna have to look at that because I just got to six point two point five yesterday, mm. and I know that's when the gates really start to amp up. I think before it was more it, there was some there was a skill gap I needed to uh, I needed to you know rectify that I definitely needed a stronger overall roster, um, yeah. and and that's why it took some time to use the variances as, as bridge content. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think overall, I just, especially once, once act 6.2 came out, by the time I, I looked at that, I was like, all right, I'm just, I'm just not ready for this. My roster is not ready. I'm not ready. So it, it, I hadn't even got to the point where the gates were holding me back. It was more just like, all right, I, I'm going to need to take some time before I'm ready for this to get my, you know, get my head around these global nodes and how I'm going to tackle them. And, and now it honestly hasn't been too bad. I think I've been a hundred percenting these chapters with, with, you know, minimal item spend. I've been actually very happy with them, even though, uh, 10 paths with a lot of repeat fights is a bit of a slog to yeah. say the least. Uh, I at least feel like I'm not just dumping resources in. <laughs> Yeah, well, obviously when it comes to 6.3 and 6.4, then we've got these, in some cases, doubles and, and yeah, doubles, I, I don't know, I can't remember if there's any like triple nodes on anything, um, and that's definitely in Act 7, which we'll talk about in a minute, but... Um, <sighs> there are, there's a triple and quadruple node combinations, especially for mini boxes. There's, uh, a, there's a whole lot of that stuff in there. It's... Yeah. Um, something <laughs> yeah i know i just i looked at that uh the 6.2.5 mordo and was just like nope not today <laughs> so uh, i think you raise an amazing point and i just want to delve in this for a quick tangent but it, the potential of rosters like as you mentioned earlier you had the time to prep out and plan your pursuit through oh that's alliteration but uh you had time to prep <laughs> out and plan your pursuit throughout uh 6.2 and a lot of the people within the endgame community, like you have Legacy doing Legends runs like three days after the content drops, and I'm on right. like a Skype call with him like 2 a.m. the night previous, like planning <laughs> out the thing. And it's just like, okay, I don't have that time. And I mean, I'm mm. sure you're using champions that have come out after the uh, that content's been dropped. One of the best counters for that Mordo is Doom. If you can notify right. those yeah. uh, those power gains, then bam, you can cycle specials like no one's business. And I think that the mantra that this content is being made for not necessarily the people at the 
who are barking for new content, but the people in the middle who are kind of approaching it very analytically. Yeah. I, I think that's what Act 6 was made for. Mm. And right now we're in the in-between stages where those people haven't reached Act 6. We're looking at the phase where a lot of the people still going throughout Act 6 are the people who are rushing in very early. Uh, like a lot of Act 6, like what has it been, like a year and a half since Act 6 started? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know yeah, the time it, it's because uh, it's, it's been a while since it's come out. And a year and a half yep. is like an obscene number of champions. That's 36 new champions added to the contest at the very minimum. And if one of those 36 is essential or key to countering one of those encounters, then the people rushing into it initially are just going to be uh, at a loss. What's the point of 100% exploring this initially when you could wait three to four months and then just hope for a right counter to come along? Mm. And this then you... Oh, sorry, I was just yeah, going to interject. Especially, especially if you don't feel like you're going to get kicked from your alliance because you haven't completed the content and gotten the resources to mm. do a rank up. Yeah. Because that may be the only area to go for availability. It's like saying, um, Clobber in time, we need you to get an, a, a six star awakening gem to uh, awaken that specific champion that you've just pulled recently. All oh, right, so I've got to do Abyss of Legends or I've got to do uh, Act Six and uh, and hope for the best that I get something from a crystal. Because that obviously mm -hmm. would, would be somewhat <laughs> the case from a high prestige, uh, highly competitive alliance. Yeah. Can I. Uh... I just want to share with you, because this is amazing, Go for it. Uh, the incredibly scuffed teams that I've beaten content with is just... <laughs> <laughs> so, the initial clear of my uh, Labyrinth of Legends team was done with, and I kid you not, a rank four five-star Captain Marvel OG. Oh <laughs> I used word. her for the entirety of the Labyrinth of Legends oh. path because she was the only rank four that I had at the time. And my first path in the Labyrinth of Lead, or in the Abyss, uh, if you guys didn't get a chance to check in, it's a VOD available on my channel. But, right. But my, I, have, I only have one of the horsemen, as they're known. I, my team, and I want to read this from the top down because it's just so scuffed and out of the ordinary, because this is day one exploration. This was less than a month after the content dropped. I had Namor, Ronan, I pronounce it like that because there's ronin and yeah ronin. i i, I uh, don't worry for me from pronunciation <laughs> i love it you know i have to go i have to get over people uh this kind of chronometer chronometer heimdall heimdall <laughs> you know i don't i don't care i don't care i love it uh all right uh human torch which and he's unduped so i only get one pre-fight in the entire abyss and uh omega red and uh symbiote supreme nice. and that path I think uh, the live stream was two hours. I spent an hour and a half of that trying to get Luke Cage down with Namor. <laughs> Ooh. <Wow. laughs> and I don't, I, at the time, I didn't have anyone uh, ranked or leveled that was an ideal counter. I didn't have, like, uh, Stealthy or She-Hulk. I didn't even have them as champions at the time, I don't think. And when you're going in, like, months later, or even a few months after the Legends runs are done, and you have the knowledge of past streams going into it. Like, it's just, uh, it's, it becomes a lot easier than day one content exploration. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the people who do end game content uh, immediately, like Legacy, who is obviously a very skilled player, mm -hmm. and Seton, who is also very skilled as well, they're not looking to get those guides from other people. They're willing to make them themselves. Mm -hmm. And when you have that kind of icy plunge into this abyss of content it's just not fun and something i also want to dilate here uh this screenshot that i pulled up from my abyss run i have 1.3 million gold <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> the, the amount has changed so much but yeah it's one of those resources that just comes in and out and i think that further highlights the uh disparities because i have to be really smart about where i invest it but yeah it, for run, for people running into content and especially the early people and even a beta test because then we're essentially mimicking what people do on day one right kind of running into it directly so i i think that's like a huge hurdling block because people exploring the beta doing this day one are essentially experiencing what legacy and seton do when a new piece of content drops or what even what you do rich i don't know if you are you a day one guy 
Um, only when it comes to uncollected. I need to get back into a habit of getting involved. With it. But, you know, when I used to do it about three, four years ago, I was like all up for it. And then I just got a little bit bored with let's get straight into it probably because then i start i moved i moved out we, we bought a house and then life hits you life hits you you know dan kids yeah. set, a clobbering time i can imagine oh, yeah. you just going like you know well got to do the dishes now got to do this this and this and i'd rather get that done first then you know get into content but that's just just how it goes i i would definitely rather get into content than doing the dishes but that's just me <laughs> <laughs> god get your priorities yeah. straight dan I, I know, I know. Don't I should, tell your it, wife total, that. Total side note. It is both it is both Mother's Day and my wife's birthday today, so as soon as we're done with this, I basically have to <laughs> I had to punch in and give her the day off. Happy Watch happy Mother's Day for the rest of the day and do yes. Hey, thank you to all the moms Thanks out so there. Moms. Yeah. We love you. I don't know if any of you are listening. If you if you are, you're probably going, Why why aren't you playing this game like anybody else is? <laughs> Why is my viewer male to female ratio ninety eight to two percent? Hi, everybody. <laughs> what, what are the odds? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, we've got probably about ten plus minutes, and I think that's probably good enough time to kind of focus on some uh, uh, this Act Seven uh, beta that we we've had. And the fact is, obviously, yeah, Rich, I'm not on the clock, so it's it's oh, uh, right, okay. It's all good. Yeah, okay, that's because, good. because of the. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, my my parents can't watch uh, our son right now. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, so I don't I don't have to run. That's that's good. Um, obviously, we we don't want to like make this kind of drag on too much, but obviously we need we we need to cover some stuff when it comes to X Seven Beta, which obviously I think started the catalyst. Excuse the pun for the. Um, the thoughts, the feelings, and many other things, because essentially this is the future of Marvel Contest of Champions. This is the future of the uh, the story mode, and I guess one one positive is the only positive I could find is that the modes have been stripped down to being three chapters. Is that still the case? Yes. So I wanted to uh, touch upon that because I feel like I've been focusing. Oh, and clobbering time! You cut out a moment. Perspective on it, but. I want to kind of step back and give a wider the game from a more analytical sense. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you guys read the initial blog post on the methodology or if people listening have read the blog post on the methodology, but one of the main reasons why they limited it to three is because they wanted to increase the availability to plow through this content for an initial clear. Mm -hmm. They wanted to put out more of this content quicker. So initial clears kind of became more common and they could inc increase replayability. Yeah, And uh, I don't like that because having a backlog of content, like, I mean, Dan, I'm sure you're, uh, you have a lot of Act 6 ahead of you, right? How oh, you yeah, it's, like, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> how would you feel if like one or two months down the line, there's like an entire new act ready for you because they're, mil or they're just putting out the comment content so quickly? I mean, it's, it is a little stressful, yeah. especially when it comes to the, the story mode because i do really like the story and i don't want to feel like i'm too behind on the story especially because it's also referenced in uncollected like with the variants like they could drop like five variants tomorrow and i'd be like all right i'll just chip away at that for the next year but like the story quest like i do want to feel like i'm a current player yeah this is so. the, one of the reasons i decided to leave my alliance obviously being a marvel contest champions youtuber there's that that pressure from people when they say why haven't you done this and why haven't you done that that i have to kind of go to say to myself like well, why haven't i done that could i force myself through it uh is it a case that i'm becoming out of touch because i'm not doing that content you know i, I that's obviously one reason i kind of pushed ahead with doing something that maybe i personally didn't feel ready to do but obviously taking away something that drew out a lot of my not a lot of my time but availability of specific champions i would want for act six obviously making that decision so i, I don't know if that's something that dan might kind of resonate with that and you know, obviously, clobber in time. You would have. Would you say you you would have the availability of champions to do? Well, you've done it, but in, in a generic sense, if they said thrusted, here's Act Seven. Would you be able to be remaining competitive in Omni and as well do the content at the same time? Yeah, I feel like Alliance Quest. It's more of a a job. Like you clock in at certain times and then complete the content. If you mm. want to block out a day to just run through the content, like I mean, I ran through. Uh, 
the Act 7 beta. I, I'm not 100% on it yet because I refuse to fight through Mage Saber 2 <laughs> more than <laughs> once. Um, but I'm uh, I'm sitting at like a, a good 96% complete on that beta because there's like two or three paths that I refuse to touch in the second quest. And I feel as if I were to get this content in the game right now and just play through it, I wouldn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy my time in the beta. I'm perfectly comfortable saying that I disliked the time that I spent in the beta because it felt repetitive. Some of the quest paths, and I don't know if anybody uh, touched on this. You guys might have touched on it. I haven't had a chance to catch up on YouTube. Been too busy in the beta. Mm. But <laughs> some of the quests and some of the lanes are directly reused from Act Act 6. It's crazy. There's a, oh, really? a strange power path that is word for word, node for node, copied and pasted over um i think there was a, an addition of one new node that they added but it makes no difference in the general span of the fight or how you're supposed to approach it and it's and i i mean this uh and when i say copied and pasted i mean in terms of health values too it's literally the exact same health down to like the single digits the only <laughs> difference is like a a 16 percent increase in attack that's very <laughs> cold, just, man that's very lazy yes and, yeah and you what are the so I say it just it does make you question then why do we have I think even Seaton said this about like well you like the, the between the, the the waiting time between an act five and act six was so long and obviously pointing out the fact as you know many people would like yeah it's good that they're putting more end game content but this surely should be waited a a longer time to make sure that number one they're not copy and pasting stuff and number two that it's uh, taken into consideration not just the the people at the top but also the people would say at midway like as we've even talked about a moment ago that would be more analytical take their time and get into it and i i feel like gimmicks through quests and content is kind of what makes it fun it would mm. it's what makes it different from like an uncollected quest and i mean you have uh obviously some of the gimmicks haven't resonated that or resonated that well like a uh, gated pass and like key stuff i do feel like one of the better specific things that they've done is buffs i feel like 6.3 the uh specific boost that you can get to clear that content and clear those lanes is one of the better takes that they've done on temporarily temporary unique quest content and i feel like they should in improve on that yeah i think that's the best thing that we've seen in a while and i well, think that i agree with you there because yeah. you know, i look at a beta right now it, the, the the design philosophy when I look at it seems to be all stick no carrot. It's like how much can we take back? Like if I like for example, you look at say the path in chapter one with Icarus on it. It's like they looked at it and said, all right, how did people eat Icarus in Act Six? Well, they use no longer use Ghost. Okay, let's put EMP on it so they can't beat it the same way. <laughs> And yep. that's that's not the definition of fun. It's like, okay, if you're gonna take something away, fine, but give me something else to work with. Like you were saying, like the buffs. Like give me give me a reason to play some champs I'm I'm not playing right now. Um, you know, if you're gonna limit a path to a few options, uh that's not that's not super fun. <laughs> Especially if those options aren't naturally great. And then if you're gonna triple counter it by putting a clairvoyant on the path <laughs> like you know like what what am i supposed to do with that if i don't have thing which i do but what if you don't <laughs> yeah and i mean uh i there's a long discussion on the beta forums about this uh should we be trying to cheese book two it's a lot of paragraphs but the highlights of it i uh i want to read this one sentence to you guys and i'm not sure what your thoughts on it are so that's what i want to get out of this but if the only way to avoid brute forcing this content is to reset and restart until I get through the path cleanly, and that has to happen too many times, and it doesn't seem like there's an obvious trajectory upward, it feels like luck, not skill. And especially in regards to a lot of this content, uh, there's no reason why I should play into the nodes with the combination presented. It becomes pointless because of the nodes and the practicality of strategies would allow the attacker to capitalize on those opportunities presented by the node combination. Nodes become less impactful when health pools go up. Unless the nodes themselves prevent you from lowering the health pool, then you are forced to play in those nodes, sometimes exclusively. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's that's it. It's like you have to look at you have to go in and fight by okay, who can I use here? 
Who can I use here? Who can I use here? All right, can I fit five of them on a team? And then there's, like you said, there's certain nodes where it's like, if you slap anything plus Aspect of War, it's just a crap uh, Aspect of War is my least favorite node. I just want to say that right now. Put anything else on a path. I hate Aspect of War. Yeah. I don't like that. I get timer on it. <laughs> Dan, are you still there? <laughs> on my end, you cut out. Uh, Dan! Is my end too rich? Yeah. Dan! Dan, you might have to re reset. <laughs> We've said oh. this, we didn't want any tech problems this time. We got... <laughs> uh, oh. Hey! He's back in person. Yeah, I'm back. All right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. You don't know what yeah. happened. You're kind of a bit kind of choppy in, choppy out. Okay, Robotic well. is usually an upload issue, so if you have extra tabs open in Chrome or something like that, you might want to just close those. Close, close, close. We'll do. Good advice. I'm like the worst to have like 85 tabs open. <laughs> All right. Your voice is already improving. <laughs> All right. There we go. There we go. It'll just be... Just be the show notes and Discord. Keep it, we'll keep it simple. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's a thing. Is you're talking about the design philosophy that went into um, Act Seven. It feels like there's been a strong negative reaction to the design elements to it, and it, they really spoke to that a lot in the in the post about the results of the the chapter one beta, I think it was Kabam Welker posted that. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like they're acknowledging that they have a lot of work to do, that this, this content is now nowhere near finished based on what we've told them. Yeah. This I is, a thousand percent agree with you. This is something that I think, again, goes back to that. Is this too soon for something like this? When Kabam, you know, where, where do they ju judge a lot of, these things for obviously a lot of the time it feels like kabam do what obviously they're a games developer it's their game they're going to do what they want with the game but obviously because they're making it for somebody it's not a case they're making it for themselves they have to really look at what people want to see from it and i understand obviously they're going this beta is meant to achieve that but from say a beta testing perspective and I'll go, obviously go to Clubber in time on this. Do you do you feel that this was too soon from what you've yes. seen so far? Yes, I, it feels unpolished. It feels like, like a lot of the fights and a lot of the nodes weren't tested. Or like alpha testing would have brought up like a lot of this stuff and made you think, oh, why would this fight be in here? Mm. And I think because uh, they've they've been a lot more open about a lot of these fights, and they've. Uh, in, in the beta, I think the communication is excellent, and especially the ability to take feedback. What I think they're lacking on is the ability to kind of explain how these fights are run. Yeah. A lot of the fit, or a lot of the threads in the beta testers' forums are, hey, how are we supposed to approach this fight? How are we supposed to beat this specific interaction? So when you have that, I think the key part that's missing from the initial beta test is people saying, oh... Because uh, when it when content gets released, it gets just gets thrown out there. There's no guide put out by Kabam on how to beat certain content. And I, I feel like there doesn't have to be. But for the purposes of beta testing, I feel like if we could get like a developer's thought on like, hey, this is how you're supposed to clear this path. Mm -hmm. It makes it a lot different because if a do you bleed path and you're supposed to beat it with like OG Black Panther, like why wouldn't I cheese that with uh, Aegon and just hit into their block? It's one of those things where it's just... Let us know what your intentions are for the content. Then our beta feedback can be appropriate towards it. Like, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, thing that I quoted from, that was, hey, devs, should we be attempting to cheese these paths? As you mentioned with the Icarus lane, if you use Ghost with Hood, you become able to phase the initial shock damage from EMP modification. And you're able to play around Icarus and pretty much KO everybody in one to two hits. Now, is that intended? Did they mean for this to be played in a certain way where you're not supposed to use a shock immune? Like, and that's something that I do want to touch upon. And that's usefulness of champions and crystals. That's mm -hmm. the main reason for a lot of people kind of feeling unmotivated in this game. When you open a six star, there's a there's a good chance that you get a champion that just since there will never use uh I don't know, like a 
I was going to use Hulkbuster, but he's getting buffed. And, like, if you pull a Juggernaut, what are the odds that you're going to use a Juggernaut for this content? You know? What's the point of having that champion in the rewards if it's not going to be viable at the competitive level where that champion would be used? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, they put nodes in, like, can't stop, won't stop, but no one actually plays that those nodes with unstoppable champions. <laughs> no. And, so. uh, yeah, I feel like them seeing that and them going, oh, hey, wait a second, no one's playing this how we intended. Like, <laughs> I feel like there's need to there needs to be a second to like kind of look back and like hmm is this an issue with them or is it an issue with us? And I feel like the adding of additional nodes to counter traditional strategies like that buffed up path they added EMP modification and Icarus. I like that combo. I like Icarus and buffed up. I think that's a great combo. I hate EMP yeah. modification. I think that's a garbage uh, thing to snap on there because then bam you're taking unnecessary damage unless you bring a shock immune. And the limitation of rosters is just huge. And I think that they have the right head, but they're thinking one step like in depth. They're trying to beat counters that don't exist and limiting your roster and specific capabilities for lanes is a no, no. I want to be rewarded for playing into the notes. I don't yeah. want my champions to suffer if I don't play into the notes. Like instead of do you bleed? I want bleed vulnerability. Don't put in one or the other. They should be expecting people to ghost or egg on their way through it. But hey, if you don't, you might be able to do it faster. There shouldn't be one be-all, end-all answer for, for this content. There should be, like, in Act 6.4, you ghosted the majority of it. I don't want to ghost for the majority of Act 7. Or Book 2, whatever it's being yeah. called. Oh. You want to have... Uh, this is the thing we're going like right i don't want to be I, I want a various amount of champions to use for diff difficult D just from like going uh I i'll give you i'm oh, sorry i was going to an example about uh using different champions here but uh, i've just found uh this this post that was a response to karate mike uh basically saying about specific champions that he used a lot of the time in the content for act seven there is a lot of uh repetition in certain champions being used whether or not it's uh quake nick fury archangel stealth spidey ghost but obviously there's a response from somebody that says that okay that's fine and that's all well and good you're using those champions but what about the champions that people are more than likely getting from six stars uh maybe only options they have at six stars maybe um say great abundance of 200 signature five stars like your meme tier what like champions like your deadpool x forces your unstoppable colossus juggernaut superior iron man venom pool groot falcon etc etc which let's face it um we're faced with this luck dilemma of further progression based on not being having not having availability to these god tier like champions that i've just mentioned and I 1,000% agree with you. And to highlight your point even more, I'm pretty far into the game, and I have opened a lot of crystals. I still don't have a Corvus Glaive or a Nick Fury. Jesus. Those champions have eluded me. So to expect there to be a baseline champion or one answer to a specific lane, what happens if people don't pull it? As you mm. mentioned earlier, Can't Stop, Won't Stop, Black Widow, Clairvoyant. I, or not Can't Stop, Won't Stop. The Icarus uh, buffed up. What happens if you don't have things? So I feel like they, they need to do one of two things. They either need to increase the availability of certain champions, either through making Nexus Crystal standard, or they need to allow more champions to clear the content and not make the passes specific. My ideal form of content is variants. I mm -hmm. really like variants, yeah. and I really dig them. And I feel like if they could increase like those specific nodes, like, for example, you get extra points for using... Uh, Korg in this chapter. He gains like a 500% attack boost mm -hmm. in this specific chapter. Okay, cool. Now we're using Korg in this chapter. I feel like they need to highlight champions more than they need to reduce everybody down. I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. And they've already proven that they know how to do this with variant uh, 2 and 3, right? Like mm -hmm. variant... That's what makes it so frustrating. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, like somebody over there knows how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and not only that is the variants continue to be interesting content variant one has its issues but i feel like the feedback from variant one was absorbed and clearly put to good use in the following issues of the variants mm -hmm. so it's like clearly that someone over there can absorb feedback and create really fun content and give me a reason to play king groot on a path or Dor <laughs> dormammu and make it fun for me 
because that's happened. Yeah. Like, yes. We, we have the proof. <laughs> we know you can do this. <laughs> yeah, I had fun doing that. I don't have fun using ghosts for the 85th time on this path. Mm. It's just not there. I want to use my six stars. The only reason why I can't is because there are better options and I don't want to spend as much. So when you have, like, I have a good chunk of six stars. I don't use over half of them because right. it's just... They're not viable. I don't like them. They're not good for content, and there's no reason to use them. Give me a reason to use the champions that you have given me, Kabam. I want the opportunity to use these six stars. And yeah, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be just one, one, uh, you know, one champ. Like give, give the path a theme, and give the Avengers a, you know, use the tags. Give the Avengers yes. a boost on this one. Give the X Men a boost on this one. Like make me play my favorite characters in. A configuration that I've seen in the comics. Like, give me an excuse to do that. That would be super fun. And give us a learning curve. If you're going yeah. to chuck in a new node, the first encounter of that new node should not be on a 400,000 health opponent. Give us the chance to learn a node and give us the chance to adapt to it in a natural way. Either if that means scaling difficulty of a lane as you go down it, playing into those nodes, like that's how I would ideally like to see it. But there's 13 new nodes in Act 7. That is a lot. Mm -hmm. That's more than any other single piece of content besides like incursions or dungeons in terms of new introductions. If they were to, say, appropriate it in a way that dungeon scales in difficulty, like climaxing on a champion that would be seen in room 19 or 20, then bam, that would be perfect. Have that slow lead in with that buff combination. Let us get used to something. Let us feel how it's going to feel. You know? yeah. yeah, and that's, you know, I think that's another thing where we've been talking about, is it too early for Act 7? And my initial answer is, well, it's too early if you're not going to do it right. But from a <laughs> from a development standpoint, I, I can't believe that we don't have Cavalier difficulty yet. And furthermore, that it looks like we're likely getting Book 2 before we get Cavalier difficulty. Hmm. My headcanon is that the very team is working on it. Ari Cavalier difficulty. <laughs> Just out of our time. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have the questing experience for it already with building the short-term events and kind of increasing the variant difficulty. But it's limited content. It should not have... I feel like the individual quests that aren't variants should not have incredibly specific fights. You should be able to clear it within that time frame. And I feel like that non-permanent content and that difficulty is is a hard balance to get right because it shouldn't be like too easy that you just plow through but at the same time they don't want anyone just clearing through this content so what do they do they raise the health pools that's what they did in uh, a lot of this content and they've come out and said hey we don't want to just raise the health pools and i mean <laughs> they haven't just raised the health pools <laughs> well the health <laughs> pools and the, the, and the chip damage from block oh. was just mm ridiculous where i was just like okay like not only am i limited here with who i can take down the path but now i've got to find some way to recover some health so i'm not just dumping in potions and i mean you could do that in the beta and it's fine but when you're thinking about it, like, okay how am i going to do this for real i uh, i'm looking at like well i mean do i do I get my morning star ramped up do I get my perfect block and my health steal or do I play killmonger with with um and get the indestructible charges so hopefully if I accidentally have to parry I don't lose 10% of my health yeah marvel it's, it's, of champions it's is all about getting inks that's what makes good champions good ghosts can get inks very easily so in this higher tier of content, trying to get those ins through blocking or intercepting becomes riskier when the opponent's health goes up. That's like an inherent mm. part of the content. Mm. But it shouldn't be, those basic attacks shouldn't be reduced in their potency. Like, um, what I mean by that is in the beta, I did multiple runs where I brought in different champions against Emma Frost to see if I could find the right answer. I brought in, well, I decided to bring in Stark's buddy. He, so the, I want to explain this to everybody who's not in the beta. Mm -hmm. There is a node on Emma Frost that allows her to put armor breaks when you hit her. That's a direct counter to Ghost. It's just how it works. However, that increases her block and chip damage in astronomical amount. I got up to four of those armor break stacks. You know how many blocked parries it took to kill me? 
No. Six. Six. Oh, Jesus. I, I was going to say probably like four. Yeah, I was going to say four. Six. Which... From 100% health. I mean, it's still not good at all. No. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, especially for a champion you need over 50% health to do yeah. <laughs> the big and, boy damage. And keep in mind that she was in her ice form, so all those parries were in direct succession of each other. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so you weren't getting a stun. <laughs> <laughs> right uh, and then she's got then she's got power reserve so oh, as soon yeah. as she starts throwing specials so you can get your in well it's just all right how many times in a row can i successfully handle uh dodging her special one with reverse controls yeah like that it, was the skill part of it yes i completely agree with you but I feel like the skill barrier, like, I believe in the three strikes you're out strategy. You know, I should be able to get hit, like, I don't know, two times with an SP1 and still survive and yeah. then play it from there. But one hit, I think it was 156,000 damage from a crit on the first hit of her SP1. Oh, yeah, you're not, you're not surviving, <laughs> you're not surviving that. No. Yeah, no, I mean, I want to get in there and brawl a little bit more and feel like there's yeah. a, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to get hit, but I like feeling like, I can make a mistake and recover from it because that's rewarding. Like we've yes. all had those epic comebacks, right? Where you get down to like 5% health and you're like, all right, focus up, focus, yes. you know, and then you like pull off something that you didn't feel like you could pull off. Like that's why we play games, right? Like that's mm -hmm. fun. Like you're like, all right, I had a rally there. That was awesome. Like there's no rallying when you're taking 110 K on the first hit. Yeah. The fight should be roller coaster. There should be ups and downs. And just right, with right. Like I want to be emotionally up. invested. <laughs> and then it's just a pit to the abyss below. It. <laughs> <laughs> you go off the first one. It's just a plunge straight down. Yep. Oh, for <laughs> sure. No for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think we've kind of, you know, there they, we could we could probably talk for very you know, long time hours about, about this, but yeah. you know, I think this is the big question of the day, and is is really what's dividing so much of the community right now is uh, Kabam has posted a response and the, the community is very divided right now on some people read the response um, and say, okay, looks like they're listening. Let's see what they do next. And then there's another part that says, no, they're not listening. That was, you know, that's just what you have to say. They're going to release it as is. Like, Rich, Clobberin, Clobberin, you go first. Yeah. What, what do you think about the response? Do you believe it? Are you at all hopeful? So I come from a background of 12.0. I was kind of a, I was a key part in getting the uh, all the documents formatted for it. But I feel as if they're taking more steps immediately than they did in the lead up to uh, an event in the community like that event that I mentioned. And I feel as if it's a step in the right direction and especially the early beta test results post done by Kabam Welker is incredibly, incredibly promising. I think that's a very good step in the right direction if they follow through. As you mentioned before, a lot of people don't have trust in Kabam to follow through on this content. But I feel as if the universal kind of outcry from not only content creators, but other people in the community as well have just pushed Kabam to the point of they have to do something. And if that something isn't good enough, then they things will go further south. And I uh, I think that what we've seen so far is perhaps the best response I could have ever imagined uh, in terms of them saying, okay, hey, we really get it. We need to revisit this content in full. To quote the post itself, <laughs> we realize that it's uh, we, what's required after this beta is more than just replacing some problematic defenders and returning some attack failures. There was significant work to be done. Mm hmm he goes into points. There's three separate points that uh, Kabam Walker raised. And like, this is what I have uh, access to. And I, I think those are very good points. And I want to see this game prosper. I have, and it's not just a sunken cost fallacy talking. I genuinely enjoyed this game and I want to see it shoot up in prosperity. Like the original reason why I was brought on this podcast back like however long ago was because we wanted to talk lore and i love the lore of this game i love everything involved in the game but that goes away if there's no community and this questing content is impossible i think that's a huge step in the right direction and i hope they take the full leap i hope they progress in the right direction and i want them to go in the right direction yeah yeah i totally totally agree it does feel like we're at a big fork in the road but there is 
there is definitely an opportunity here if they if they pull this off and head in the right direction. So I am hopeful with that. I mean, we can't really talk about what's said in the in the CCP servers, but I will say they've definitely been soliciting a lot of feedback and people have definitely been offering it and clearly there's been a lot of uh, of public postings uh on people's youtube channels but there is there's definitely a lot going on um behind the scenes too Mm. so i i definitely feel like in the last few days that i have been listened to so that that gives me hope so i i do feel like they're listening and yeah, you know, we can't expect them to release like a brand new beta on Monday and have everything fixed. We we are unfortunately going to have to be patient. This is a long process, but I feel like they handled the end of the week with that post as well as they could have. Yeah, uh, the 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 kind of the secondary part to this is obviously where we're we're kind of addressing the X seven beta, but the other side of things would be where they take the other aspects uh, of people's concerns obviously based on uh, you know seating's video and talking about not just about yes act 7 but the um the inner workings to people's frustrations which are being obviously aired out and hopefully structured in a way that because we're meant, am i right in saying we're meant to be getting a response from Kaban Mike at some point addressing the um the other stuff the like alliance stuff um maybe some of the things we've mentioned in this podcast is that correct I, I think we are supposed to be getting a response to that sometime in the near future. Yeah, because that will be the other thing. It'll be like, yes, okay, the future of MCOC from new endgame content has to be addressed to make sure that it uh, ticks boxes for players based on, yes, what Kabam uh, Welker put out uh, in the forums, but as well uh, how Kabam answer against the things raised, obviously from Seaton's video and as well the um, other things that have been brought to the table. So... It's going to be a big week for Marvel Contest of Champions and for us as players as to how Kabam not just answer the call for new content, but also the call of the uh, the player base to make the game uh, better moving forward from Alliance Quest right the way through to Golden ISO um, acquisition. Uh, so we got well, yes, yeah, for sure. There is a lot of work to be done. Mm. But I think we've. Um, I think we've adequately covered the past, the present, and uh, and the future quite well, ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and lads uh, here. Clobber in time, what are you up to next week? Next week? Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of content? In content, terms of story, mode, story mode, what life in general. I have, uh, I'm currently getting books together for George Perez's C2C signing. Wow. <laughs> Which how, is a, a fun little segue. How are they hand handling like uh, events? Uh, events like that? obviously in the UK where we're being very that we don't have that. That's like they don't do anything like that anymore. It's a case like everything's shut down. So I mail them out to a secure location, and then uh, the CGC a company takes care of the grading and signing for a certification. Okay. So it's uh, it's all handled remotely. I'm not meeting anyone in person. It's just I mail away books, and then they come back in a case and signed. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic dan what are you up to next week um i am working on my 6.2.4 guide and i am going to do a uh an account progression update uh because i believe i'm up to five i'm up to five years and uh three months playing the game uh next this coming week so it feels like a a good time to do a, a progression update because I've gotten a lot done since the last one. Brilliant. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm up to. Probably reporting on stuff that goes on. Uh, a few requests from from guides on things, but we'll, we'll we'll see if they can be structured well enough to be uh, interesting videos. We'll have to see from that. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, today. We've uh, covered a lot of stuff. Uh, which I've probably put time codes for, for people to check out. You can find Clobber in Time on his YouTube channel. I'll put a link to the bio and Twitter, which I'll put a link in all bios. And as well, Dan on uh, www.frontlinemcc.blog. Have I got that right, the right? I've got it around the wrong way. It's www.frontlinemcc.home.blog. Uh, there you go. Check it out and put, uh, make sure you've got that uh, bookmarked as well for all the uh, updates and as well guides and information on the game. Thank you, everybody, for listening and see you all next week.
There we go. And we're out. All right. Awesome stuff. Thanks so much.